Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a simple sequence in Avid Media Composer. So you're going to go ahead and launch Avid from your dock and you'll see the project that you created previously for the slideshow. You're just going to go ahead and select it and say OK. Once your project is open, you'll remember the project window and you'll notice your four bins that we created, music, pictures, sequence, and titles. Today you're going to open the pictures bin by double clicking the blue icon and you're also going to open the sequence bin we'll be using in a little bit here. So you'll notice that I'm just kind of adjusting the size of my windows here to make sure that I can see everything on my screen. And over here in my pictures bin, I set up the order that I wanted my pictures to go in previously. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to this first picture, the first clip here, and I'm going to want to load it into my um, source monitor here, my preview screen. So I can do that a couple of different ways. I can simply grab the clip and drag it over, or I can double click it and it will also appear there as well. So what I'm seeing here is that picture and it's not in my video yet. I'm just previewing it and I'm marking how much of the picture I actually want to use in my video. Now one thing to note is the duration of the clip itself. So because this is just a um, digital image, when I imported it into Avid, my system was set up to create 30 seconds of media for this clip. So if I look right up here at the top of my composer, I can actually see that it's set for 30 seconds and then zero frames. So if I was to click play here and watch this clip, it's going to play for 30 seconds and I can see the time code moving at the top of the screen. So 30 seconds for each picture really is a long time. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark the part of the picture that we want to use. And you'll notice when you're at the very beginning of the clip, you get this little bracket on the left hand side. And when you're at the very end, you get the bracket on the right. So that helps you make sure that you're in the right spot. You'll also see these little notches underneath. And this is a great indicator of time. So it looks like it divides the picture into three sections. And if I have it for 30 seconds, then right here would be just about 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and then there's my 30 seconds. So it can help me pick what part of this clip I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and move into that first notch right there. And that's going to be about 10 seconds in. And I'm going to say, okay, let's start right here. So in order to mark that spot, I'm going to mark an in. And the icon for that is actually right below. It looks like a backwards parentheses. That shortcut on my keyboard is the letter I. So if I click the letter I on my keyboard, I see I have this little in mark. And I also get um, an, an, a triangle icon over here on the left to say that I'm completely lined up with that in. The reason that I left some room here and I didn't take the very beginning of the picture is that eventually I want to add some transitions. I want to have the pictures fade into each other or push each other off the screen or wipe each other out. And in order to do that, I have to have what's called handle. So if I decided to mark my in at the very beginning of the picture, I wouldn't have anything to fade and it would give me an error when I tried to add those transition effects. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But what you need to know right now is that we want to set that in point at about 10 seconds into the clip. Now I've decided that I want to make my picture five seconds long on the screen. So I could try and guesstimate and, and look around where that is, or I could actually just use the numeric keypad on my keyboard and I can click the plus. When I do that, you get this screen or this window right here and I can say plus five zero zero for five seconds and then I can hit enter and look it automatically jumped my position indicator ahead five seconds into the clip and right there I'm gonna say okay stop I want to mark just this part 
And the key for that is right here to mark an out, or it's the O on your keyboard. So we've marked an in with I and an O without, and it's about five seconds apart. If I look up here, I can see that the duration between my in and out is about five seconds, and I'm off by one frame, but that's okay. The duration of my total clip, 30 seconds. So now that I've said, okay, I want this five seconds of my picture, I'm ready to add it to my video. We can do that a couple of different ways. You can actually drag it around, but when you do that, especially if you're new to using Avid Media Composer, you can tend to overwrite some of the clips and, and it can get kind of confusing. So I'm gonna teach you to use the keyboard shortcut instead. There's actually two keyboard shortcuts and they are the letter V as in very and the letter B as in boy. For our purposes right now, we're gonna go ahead and use the letter V as in very or vegetable. So go ahead and click V and you get a prompt that asks you, where do you wanna save your new sequence? Well, hey, we created a sequence bin, so we're gonna save it there. Once you've done that, a number of different things just happened. You can see that now we have our same image over here on the right hand side of the screen. You can see that we finally have something on this timeline. And inside of the sequence bin, we just got our sequence. So you can name this my slideshow. And you can see that now that is what your uh, sequence is called. What you're seeing here is now the actual video. So now the actual video is only five seconds long. It's not 30 seconds like our preview clip was. So if I was to push play, it's only going to play for five seconds. And that's just what we wanted it to do. You can grab the position indicator to scrub back and forth around the video. You can do the same thing down here. You can't grab it up here though. You actually have to grab the position indicator inside of the sequence here to move it around. You want to make sure that your position indicator is always where you want your next clip to go. So I'm going to load my next clip by double clicking it from my pictures bin. It loaded up here on my preview screen. And again, if I play it, it's going to be 30 seconds long. So I want to mark just five seconds of this picture. So I'm going to go ahead and scrub into that first mark right there. And I'm going to mark an in with the I key on my keyboard. Then I'm going to use the numeric keypad on the right side of my keyboard. And I'm going to say plus five zero zero for five seconds. And I'm going to hit enter. And it jumped me ahead five seconds. I'm going to go ahead and mark my out right there. So now I have another five second clip. And I want to make sure that this blue position indicator in my timeline is right where I want my next clip to go. If it's over here a little bit and I choose V to insert my clip here, what you'll see is that we've got our picture of the outside of the school, then we have our edit point, we've got our picture of the parking lot, and then, oh, we go back to a little piece of the school there. And that's because when I inserted the picture, there was still a little bit of that first picture left in the timeline. So I want to make sure that I'm all the way at the end and then I can insert my new picture and I can see that it's a nice smooth edit from one to the next and I don't have anything else at the end here. So now my entire video is da -da -da, 10 seconds long. And I'm just gonna keep going like that with my pictures or my clips here. I'm gonna move up, mark my in with I, move ahead five seconds, mark my out, drop it down with V, go to my next one, in with I, plus five, out, and V. And you can see that you're building a nice little um, sequence down here. Oh, well, good luck.